I think Singapore is at a stage where we are re-examining really quite critical big questions about ourselves, you know, who we are, what our identity is, and how we govern ourselves. Well, this is what think tanks ought to do. Try and understand our current political landscape, consider what might be our chief challenges in the years to come, and how we might govern ourselves in responding to these challenges. We knew we wanted to do a scenario planning process around the question of how we govern ourselves in 10 years' time, which would engage the public. We applied scenario planning methodology in quite an intentional way because we thought that it would be an inclusive process. It allowed us to include perspectives from multiple sectors. And we also thought that the focus on the future would be useful. To involve seven sector workshops of 140 people, you never quite know what to expect. So I think the first challenge for us was to be able to frame these what we call sectors or communities of people who we'd like to involve in the process. What we were asking them was what are the most plausible yet challenging stories of Singapore in 2022 that we could bring to the next group and then for the next group to do the same. Now, not that we want people to deliberately disagree, but it was important in the process to challenge the orthodoxies. Things that the community don't question, things that Singapore don't question. When you speak about allows us to make choices about distribution. Who is that us? The definition of who's in and who's out is contested even in the first place. That means an LGBT movement might feel that they're in, but say conservative or religious organizations might think they're out. This is more like in, uh, the individual is paramount versus some notion of who is paramount. But then we, of course, will continue to be contested because inevitably there will be people excluded even from the league. Well, facilitation is not always about bringing people together, but about creating a container within which disagreement can coexist. The second and probably most challenging of the design issues was how do we come together as uh, a larger group to have a conversation around what the final scenario should look like. Uh, that was the final workshop. So what we did was we got the group to vote. I, I found uh, our team solution um, kind of kind of hit the nail on, on the head in terms of what was required, but it was uh, we, we lost by a small margin. Uh, it's 28, 25, and 19. Right. So we'll stay with that. The process was a bit confusing because we had three options to choose from, uh, and some of us tried to change it in terms of asking for you know a runoff between the uh, top two. Uh, but then there's democracy for you, right? <laughs> you go with the majority flow. No, there was drama along the way, and I think that that should be the only way. You know, if it had been too easy for us to converge, I think it would have meant that we hadn't experimented very much with the potential um, range of scenarios that were out there. We knew we wanted to have an exhibition of some kind to communicate the scenarios to a wider public. So we turned abstract and fairly analytical scenarios into an immersive arts experience. I've always believed that the best way to communicate the future is to have people live in it. So we came up with this idea, can we create an incomplete artwork that must be completed by the audience? The audience have to constantly ask themselves, what's the future going to be like? The second question is, what kind of government do you want? And the third question is, what kind of role do you want to play in governance? One of the main portals that the audience must go through is the useless exhibition. In this portal, you have to consider what is useful now may be useless in the year 2022. That choice becomes very important because with that choice, you are deciding for yourself what are the values, what are the things that you still want to keep in Singapore. That is our vision for the future. The second portal is to ask themselves what are the modern politicians and modern people they want to be what kind of attributes they want for our future politicians, as well as attributes that they want for themselves as they move into the year 2022. Chit chop chop chop. You know, we wanted just by the name itself to give people this sense that it was going to be casual. We only allowed our guests 10 minutes for a presentation, after which everybody could jump into the fray and start having a robust discussion. The future screens, tomorrow scenes, ideas. We wanted the audience to put themselves in the shoes of what the TV viewers of 2022 might watch. And packing ideas about national conscription, about seniors. What if those were the new, new norms of 2022? Sing Along Song is a portal whereby audience participate in our national pastime, singing. Here we use three very familiar national songs. We rewrite the lyrics according to the three scenarios that the IPS has given to us. 
Now the first song is of course is gonna be about uh, seeing a store. It's all about wealth. It's all about materialistic things. Okay, believing the fact that you know the more you have, the happier you'll be. We are happy workers, you and I. What we are is what we buy. Count on us to want the very best, especially from the west. Sing a give, right? It's about what the government gives you. Now we're home. Finally, it's not about the money. Wiki City, okay, where we feel what if the government wasn't enough? And therefore, we want to take things into our own hands. The people, the power to the people. Everybody now. I will sing a good on our own way. Different parties want we more. Through the singing, they start to reflect which scenario speaks to them. The other portal is the Forum Theatre play, Wouldn't It Be Nice? In this play, we have Singaporeans facing a major crisis in the year 2022. That we should be working together. Oh, no wonder I hear about people clashing with police. Hey, we are doing it peacefully, okay? Hey, 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 relax. Hey. The audience will come up and replace this character and try to solve the crisis reflecting the kind of values that they want in terms of governance in the future. They managed to try and transport us into a crisis situation where the raw issues will emerge. Since everybody had good intentions, but if everybody did the things according to what they thought was right, then somehow or other the whole thing may not turn out right. Uh, it was tough. <laughs> Actually, I felt very lost. Um, it didn't really go out the way I wanted it to be because it can't help everyone. Definitely, I think I learned something new. And I think it, it helps people to break off from the comfort zone. I was quite surprised actually that Singapore was actually quite forthcoming. But it's vibrant and it's open and it's uh, spontaneous and it's different. And it's not filtered, but it's natural. And I think that's wonderful. I think the best thing about it is that they don't all agree. I cannot fully endorse what Nick's action are, but likewise I cannot see a way through when the government has lost the trust of the people. The IPS Prism Survey is uh, what participants encounter towards the end of their journey and really it's a way of um, capturing what the audience you know, feel and what they're thinking about their values about governance in Singapore. And I mean, apart from the survey and this formal piece of research, I think one of the great values of this kind of work also is that people who come to the space actually interact with one another and are already giving their views to one another and there's healthy dialogue and discussion happening there and that also is a very rich form of research. So we have both. When we hear views that are different from our own, our instinctive reaction is just to um, push it away or just ignore it or worse still, maybe castigate it and, and mock it. Um, and I don't think that's healthy for society. I think we need to be able to have uh, more platforms where we come and be genuine about listening to someone else's point of view, even if we disagree with them. Uh, PRISM tried to serve such a purpose and I think uh, we're going to need more of that in the future. And if a me the measure of success is the, the amount of discussion it generates, I think the project succeeded. You know? Uh, people talked about the future. They did, in fact, do what uh, we meant them to do, which was to pause and ponder uh, their future as citizens, as, as citizens in a representative democracy.